Okay, let's just go deep. Patch 9.2 is all sorts of crazy and far out. The lore implications are massive. I mean, of course they're going to be. We are pretty much going to the engine room of the cosmos. I know that's a bit of a hard sell for many, but that is literally what's going on. Or, as you're about to find out, we're going to one of six of them. Apparently, we're gearing up for a cosmic war, but when you look at the evidence, that might already have happened. And, in fact, we may just have been on the winning side. So, what's actually going to happen, and how's it going to be better with squarespace.com forward slash Bellular Gaming? Today's sponsor, again, save my ass. The Pale Beyond's reveal was almost upon me, and nothing was done. I needed a website really quickly. Over a weekend, I hopped into Squarespace's very easy to use site builder and I built Bellular.Games. It came into being. And this time, I even, I've never done this stuff before, I use custom CSS and code injection to do a few neat things. And it's still mobile responsive. And really that's what's cool. Super easy to use tools, but loads of headroom to do fancy business if you want. And they've even got easy to add membership features, email lists, e-commerce, and loads of other fantastic features. So from what I built a while ago in 40 minutes on the sofa with an iPad using their award-winning templates to a build like this one, which is a little bit more custom, a little bit more in-depth, well, Squarespace, it just is the fast and easy way to have a fantastic looking web presence. And what's great is, all of those super fast tools mean that even if you are doing the fancy stuff, the other things, they don't get left behind. As an example, I had barely any time to add the team page, but they actually had a whole pre-made block where I just had to put the images on and it just worked. And having a great looking web presence is important because your site is going to be people's first impression of you online. Those impressions count. So head over to squarespace.com forward slash Bellular Gaming and use that Bellular Gaming promo code and you'll get 10% off. So, a big thanks to Squarespace for once again saving my butt, and with that said, let's go. The Shadowlands reeks of something other than death. We've all seen it. Look at Oribos. It looks proto-Titanic, doesn't it? Uh, telltale marks of order are everywhere in the Shadowlands, just like how they were in Azeroth, actually. You know, we've got titany looking architecture, we've got forged servant beings, we have a pantheon who basically is there keeping the whole machine running. Zareth Mortis then? Well, Zareth translates to keystone, according to Grimoire of the Shadowlands. Mortis, of course, is Latin, death. Uh, keystone of death. And within Zareth Mortis, we find a forge of afterlives. We find biological experiments. And that totally reminds all of us of Azeroth, right? You know, our, our world is full of machines that nurture Azeroth's soul, and there are numerous titan petri dishes like Sholazar Basin and Ungoro Crater. So given all of that, the stylistic similarities, it is not insane to assume that the first ones have some form of link to the titans, right? Or perhaps the other way around. You know, the first ones, those who did what to the Shadowlands? From what we understand, they didn't create the Shadowlands, they ordered the Shadowlands. Bastion, Ardenweald, and the rest, they were created with the Forge of Afterlives, which is a thing in Zareth Mortis. The Pantheon of Death were created using the technology of Zareth Mortis, just like how the Titans created the Keepers. You know, Odin, Freya, Mimiron, all them. The first ones did not create the Shadowlands then, they ordered it into the form we see now. And, as we're about to find out, they did a lot more than just that. What if I told you that Zareth Mortis was, in fact, but one of six? Well, that's the conclusion that I cannot help but draw from this. And the implications truly are rather massive. Mortis. Lumen. Ordos. Rhythm and structure. Vitae, umbra, tumult. Improvisation and possibility. Mortis, lumen, ordos, vitae, umbra, tumult. Death, light, 
order life, void fell. The six cosmic forces, all spoken by this NPC, this oracle NPC, found within Zareth Mortis. What does that mean? Well, Zareth Mortis, right, we know that was created by the first ones. I think we can therefore assume that these other Zareths were created by the first ones as well. So, we just established, right, earlier in this video, how the first ones appear to be beings of order. They display far more order-like traits than really anything. What does all of this mean then? Well, I think it means that they, beings of order, and if they're not, don't worry, I'll talk about that later in the script, uh, but what they did is they brought form and function to the fundamental cosmic planes, and in the process, they created the universe as we know it. Did the other cosmic forces try to stop them? What happened in all of those other planes? I mean, the Shadowlands was initially described to us as just being this vast, infinite expanse of, like, death energy. And of course, the first ones show up and they create Zareth Mortis, they build all the afterlives, they set the system up, they build a great cycle. And they kind of came in there and ordered it. That's where I have to wonder. Was there original beings of death? What's going on? Okay, this is where things can get a bit crazy. We're gonna do the juicy take first, that the war for the cosmos has already happened, and that order won. Besting everything else, the first ones were able to put their own spin on the fabric of reality, weaving it into a form that suited their purposes, creating the great cycle seemingly centered around birth, cultivation, and then use of anima. They reigned supreme, and from each Zareth installation, they began to work on their design, creating life, weaving magic, and forging each pantheon. The Titans are the pantheon of order within the material plane. Their home Zareth is Zareth Ordos, but perhaps they don't even know that it exists, or they're just not allowed to talk about it because that's where they were made. Whatever it is, it's in the arcane plane, the plane of order. Perhaps there are more titans there, who knows? The first ones also created the pantheon of death in the Shadowlands, that we definitely know, and we literally fight prototype versions of each of the pantheon members in the new raid. Over in the plane of life, they created whatever Elun is a part of. After all, remember, the Primus directly told us that Elun is the Winter Queen's counterpart in the realm of life thus placing them all within the same cosmic system that was set up by the first ones. And I think this alone confirms that the first ones' designs are in operation everywhere. You know, that there is a Zareth Vitae, um, and in that, you know, in that plane, probably created in Zareth Vitae, there is a being who works along with the Winter Queen. And I think that being is a loon. I have no idea what an initial war in heaven would have looked like here, but I'm fairly sure how it ended. Because there's only really one force who made the cosmos what it is. I mean, think about Void. The Void Lords are currently trapped outside the universe, trying to get in. That's what all the old god stuff's about. Were they always trapped outside the universe? Or were they merely banished out there by the first ones? After whatever initial struggle happened. Indeed, are the first ones to order as the Void Lords are to Void. Then even think about light. Think about the sentient expression of light. That's the Naru. Now, Khadgar found a book claiming that the Naru were created by Elune. Now, Elune, of course, was created in Zareth Vitae by the first ones, from all that we can deduce so far. So that means that even our big beings of light appear to trace their origin back to a being of the First One's design, creation. Perhaps a children of the First Ones, in the form of a loon, the counterpart of the Winter Queen. Okay, big war. Big war a long time ago. That's the dramatic take. Right, we can say that the Cosmic War was all but one, that the First Ones set up life and death, that they built the Titans to watch over the Cosmic Forces and shepherd the new material plane, that they set up these installations, these Zareths, in the most deep part of every Cosmic Plane, and once their work was done, they somehow disappeared. Seen like this, order is a benevolent 
cosmic dictator. And Steve Denuser actually pretty much uh, said this. I believe it was in my interview. Uh, he said that the Titans and order, you know, they're our allies, provided that our conception of order lines up with their conception of order. Obviously, we know that to be the case because the Titans have been willing to eradicate worlds teeming with life and civilization via their constellar operated reorigination machines, as we see in Wrath of the Lich King. Yes, even if that means countless civilizations fall. Of course, as Algalon had borne witness to. So that's that. Perfect order. And with a first one's forged being having created the narrow, probably a situation of light right now being appealing to order. But the thing is, though, as much as I've had fun here talking about a great war in the past, it doesn't need to be war. Let's talk about creation myth. The Great Dark was shaped by the Titans. The Material Plane was shaped by the Titans. Why? Well, because ordering things is what the Titans do. They seed life, they let it flourish, and they shepherd it throughout the cosmos. If the first ones are merely a sentient expression of order, then chances are they did the same. But that perhaps this was before the universe as we knew existed, because of, obviously, the whole fabric of reality that was created by the first ones. So whenever they did all of their work, it was a far more old, fundamental, primal time, perhaps even before the Great Dark even existed. So within what the first ones could see, they just went about the place, ordering it, much like how the Titans did to the Material Plane. And when they looked around, they probably saw vast, infinite, undefined planes of fundamental energies. And much like the Titans ordering planets, they ordered these planes. Building the Zareth installations, right? From that point, I would posit that the turning on of the vast cosmic machine, the actual Big Bang, the clash of shadow and light, I think that's whenever the first ones, for lack of a better word, hit the button on creation. Basically made the universe explode into existence. Think about what Denuser speaks of with fractals as well. He loves himself a good fractal. Well, I mean, ephemera is this new thing in patch 9.2, and it seems to be the anima of Zareth Mortis. And I have to wonder, is it some sort of omni-fuel, right? You know, the, the thing that kind of divides into all which we know and see. Perhaps much like how the first ones clearly are wielding a form of magic that is more primal, maybe a bit more abstract than the types of magic we see elsewhere in the WoW universe. Because every form of magic that we see in the WoW universe is a result of the first one's creation. But when we see the first one's magic being used, that's the magic that was used before any of the magic that we use even existed, in a way, right? So indeed, you could say that perhaps the first ones are not beings of order. You could say they maybe embody all the cosmic forces, um, able to sort of wield what came before what we know now, and that perhaps the Titans, the beings of order, maybe they just merely imitated what they found in Zareth Ordos. And that is why the Titans bear a resemblance to the first ones. So this is a read in things that means no war, and I think further explains the creation myth of the universe. Then I'd also say that if you are to look at any form of cosmic force, it very much would be the case that if a cosmic force was going to manifest itself in a way where it could direct change, it would be order, right? It's the one that does that. So really, I think this just speaks to there being a time before time, where the first one set everything up. And I think in this time before time, the material plane, where, you know, everything that we know exists, I think it did not exist. So that's my theory. But with that, let's talk about the Titans and where they fit in. The first ones built the Zareth installations in each plane and seemingly went about creating their various different pantheons, of which we have met Death and Order. Loon is clearly part of the pantheon of life, or the whatever of life, but she is a strange case, being called an upstart goddess by Zalatath, making me think that she is actually the Zoval of life. I know, Dory, it can make sense. When I say the Zoval, I mean the one who rebelled against her creator's will. Just in a far less obviously evil way. The makeup of the Titans themselves is even odd. Amonthul for time, a part of Arcane. Norganon for celestial magics and lore, so I guess other aspects of Arcane. Aenar for life. Argus for death. Kazgaroth and Golganeth? Like Earth? Water? Basically the Builders. Sargaris and Agrimar. 
security. What of the other cosmic forces? Well, Azeroth's role is unknown, but it's probably grander than the rest of the Pantheon, given all that we can deduce from 9.2. Then, at least one world soul is confirmed to have been destroyed by Sargeras. So, who knows what cosmic force it would have been a bit closer to. With all that we know now, the best that I can tell is the Titans essentially exist in the material plane to defend the results of the First One's creation. They can police magic, build worlds, fight off old gods, nurture life, work within the cosmic planes, such as, um, you know, the, the whole Emerald Dream, like, sort of creation myth and how it could tie into a lifelands. Basically, the Titans are all you need to keep the First One's great cycle going from the perspective of the Material Plane. Argus clearly had a deep enough role as well, but we're likely going to have to wait just a little bit longer to find out exactly how Argus fit, actually fitted into all of this, and uh, perhaps to speculate how the Titans would maybe have acted if Argus had have hatched from his world soul state. So the Titans, basically, the have an instinct for order, is right in line with upholding the great cycle of the first ones. But to finish this video, there are two creations of the first ones who did not follow the plan. Zoval rebelled, right? He did not like the crater's design, and the punishments he received from his brethren basically forged him into the villain we know today. Alun, however, is different. As I just said, Zalatath described her as an upstart goddess, and later on, the Winter Queen calls her sister. We also know that Elune and the Winter Queen had been estranged because Elune did something to piss off the Winter Queen, make her feel betrayed. And then, of course, the Primus says that Elune is the Winter Queen's counterpart, making it very direct. So I think it's clear what happened here, in my opinion. Elune had a charge, right? Her charge would have been to perform her function within the plane of life. Why is she being called an upstart goddess? Why is she estranged from her counterpart? I think it's clear. I think it's because Elune also disagreed with her lot in life and perhaps the great cosmic cycle. Perhaps she had grander designs. Perhaps she, like Soval, thought that the whole cosmic cycle was just a bit rubbish. Either way, I think she went against her maker and is doing whatever she wants. Seemingly, this means protecting life across the cosmos as much as she can. Not that she seems to have done a fantastic job. So because of this, I would not be surprised if we see a seed of sense in Zoval's original betrayal. If we basically understand why Zoval took his first step, and if Blizzard will do that, so that that little seed of plot can flourish through an upcoming Elune storyline, where he realized that yes, Zoval was evil and all of that, but he had a point, a point that Elune, ostensibly a good guy, understands. And I think that would explain why Shadowlands, in spite of having a massively underwritten A-plot that needed more time, why it still felt like it really needed to push forward the Elune Night Warrior arc. So basically, there you have it, everybody. The Cosmic War may have already happened, and at the very least, I think you understand a lot more about the direction Blizzard are going in with the whole creation backstory of the Warcraft universe. So that's quite a lot to chew on, isn't it? And uh, enjoy chewing on it. Thank you very much for watching today's video. I hope you found it interesting and illuminating. And with that, have a great day. I'll see you next time.